And just a quick side note, I completely forgot to mention this, but there, this new moon is also making a sextile to Mars and Pisces. And so I think that that's ultimately really feeding into the queen of wands and the page of wands and the super fiery energy that we're getting where we feel really inspired on a new direction in life. And whenever I see some aspects to Mars, it's about what action do we want to take that is different or is going to move us forward and a sextile means that we are being supported we know what action we want to take we feel good about it um, and we feel really inspired by it all right so let's go ahead and jump in with aries rising so for you guys mars is your chart ruler um, and again it is in a sextile so you guys are being really changed and impacted by what's going on because not only is Uranus in a sextile with you but also so is this eclipse and so you guys I think are getting a lot of divine inspiration right now with this star card I think you guys are getting this feeling of hope and of a new direction coming towards you especially because Mars is now in co-presence with Venus, Neptune, and Jupiter all some of the most uplifting spiritual idyllic kind of planets very inspirational planets and so i think that being in co-presence meaning it's in the same sign they're all in pisces together while they're not exactly conjunct they are sharing the same energy they're in the same household and so they are experiencing one another and so i think that your um, chart ruler mars getting this experience this kind of spiritual support right now uh, must feel really really good it must feel really hopeful and inspiring and emotionally uplifting. And I also pulled the Queen of Cups. So I think that you guys are becoming extremely in tune um, through these planets as well. You are, get, again, being very divinely guided by your intuition and having clarity about how to move forward, especially with Uranus making that sextile to your, uh, your chart ruler, your planetary ruler. Okay, so this eclipse is happening in your second house of finances. Um, and so I think that you guys are maybe having some new ideas about how to create more stability in your life, whether that means more financial stability, more um, emotional stability, more confidence. Maybe it's wanting to invest in something long term to create something stable for yourself. Um, regardless, there is something that you guys are having a change up of in that area of your life that I think is going to bring you greater blessings of abundance. And this eclipse is making the sextile to Mars in your 12th house. So I think that you guys are really going to start feeling super invigorated when Mars does finally enter into the sign of Aries, where it will be in your first house, it will be in its domicile. And I think that's when you're going to start feeling like all of your energy is really flowing. And then you're going to know exactly how to implement all the changes that you are feeling right now so let me go ahead and just check when mars does move into aries so it looks like it's happening um on oops it looks like it's happening on may 25th of this year and so i think that you guys again are going to really start to see this eclipse take shape when you have the energy right and may 25th to go out and make something happen um your your chart ruler will be super strong will be ready to go will know what it wants and i think that's why i pulled the page of swords i think you are starting with this eclipse to know what you want so start planning ahead. The second house I do think has a lot to do with um, our plans, what what we want to build up and what we want to create long term. And so I think that you might have some ideas now and then you might it might start to come more full circle towards the end of May when Mars finally does move into um, your sign. Okay, so you guys are having uh, Venus and Jupiter and Neptune also con all conjunct in the 12th house. So again, I think that's why you guys are being very uplifted spiritually with this star card, very much supported. This is a time when your angels or your Passover loved ones are here on your side or kind of I think healing you emotionally because the star is a card of healing. So if there has been some things that have blocked you from expressing some some certain desires of yours or who 
where it's led to self-sabotage or you holding yourself back. This is a time in which a lot of those things can be healed and released so you can step more into your personal power and step again into your greater emotional understanding of yourself. So it's not just about being intuitive with this Queen of Cups and following that, but it's about um, really honoring your emotional depth, your emotional needs, and having a lot of emotional maturity and using that to navigate your life. And so if you have had some unhealed wounds, I feel like a lot of those will be healed now, will be brought to the surface so that you can have just much more emotional stability or internal stability when moving ahead. So if you've been like more down, more depressed, more uncertain, again, I think you're going to have more clarity come through, a lot more emotional clarity come through. And then I think in terms of action that will be more towards May, the end of May, where you'll really start to get your guns blazing and have the energy and the decisiveness and the action behind everything that you're feeling now. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You guys also have Mercury in your third house making a sextile to Venus and Jupiter in the 12th. And I just pulled the 10 of cups for that. So this is something I pulled earlier. I put it in the middle of the deck and it just popped out again for you. So I think that you guys are able to achieve finally some deep emotional fulfillment um, that you may have felt like was lacking, that you may have felt like you were struggling against at certain points of your life, especially with, you know, Chiron in your sign. You know, you don't, I don't know what planets it could be aspecting there, it's just a time in which a lot of healing has to be done. You have to re, like, reimagine your identity in a lot of ways in this lifetime as an Aries rising. And so I feel like this can have painful processes that bring about events from our past or our childhood to the surface or to re-experience as adults that can just be uncomfortable and can make you question yourself and your worthiness, your worthiness of love. And so I feel like you are shedding some layers of that, some really deep soul evolution here. Again, Pluto is retrograde, so we are starting to really face um, these elements of of our soul's evolution and kind of what is contributing to that and versus what is taking away from that or what is no longer helping us or aiding us in that pursuit. And so with the page of swords and the 10 of cups, I feel like you guys are getting this level of new ideas and mental clarity that is almost like wiping the windows clean, wiping the slate clean. And you can finally see, um, with more, uh, with more clarity, your life, your vision of yourself, as well as, your emotional nature. And I think it's going to bring about more feelings of um, support and contentedness, especially with Mercury in the third. I think that your conversations with others, your su like feeling supported by others is going to be at an all-time high with that sextile with those planets in the Venus and Jupiter in the 12th house. So a lot of loving energy, a lot of support for you at this time. I think a lot of emotional clearing and healing as well. So let me pull a card couple more cards for you just because I feel like it all right the next card I have is the wolf so the, again this is a card of community and so I do feel like you guys are going to be experiencing the support that you need um, whether that's a friend coming through or someone giving you an idea for the next step um, some some level of support either emotional physical um, spiritual that is going to take you to the next level. And then I also pulled the focus card. Let me go ahead and read what that says for you. Wait, I can't, oh, here, I was like, I can't find the book. Okay. It's also number 35. If that's relevant for some of you, maybe so. Focus. Stocks offer confidence, calmness, and a centered place to rest amid turmoil and change. It's time to focus, to think more deeply and slow. Your personal and slow down. Your personal truth needs some attention, so don't let it get lost in your present dealings. Stocks indicate and lead you to a balanced place in emotional swings. That's exactly what I was saying. I feel like you're becoming much more emotionally balanced and healing a lot of these identity wounds and things about past and childhood and worthiness, um, which can really show you again this personal truth that this card is mentioning um be careful of lo losing yourself amid the behaviors of others 
I, I, in fact, I feel like you are supported through the behaviors of others right now. So, um, I don't think that that's necessarily the concern. So I feel like you guys again are coming to this beautiful emotional cleansing is the idea that I'm getting. And, and I think that it's going to be something that you really, when you're hearing this, it's going to feel like a sense of relief. Like you're finally getting this peace and this calm and this emotional balance over yourself and then in late May I think you're going to start kicking into action mode once you have this beautiful clean slate within yourself so that is what I'm seeing for you Aries rising and if you want to learn astrology check out my course astrology 101 in the description box below I also have readings there if you want it done for you and I hope you guys have a great day bye all right let's just jump right into the next uh, rising sign, which is going to be my beautiful Taurus rising. So this is going to be obviously a big one for you as a Taurus rising, meaning it's going to take place in your first house and it is conjunct Uranus. So lots of changes, lots of changes to your personal power, your authority, your leadership, your sense of self, your physical appearance, the way that you identify, the way that others perceive you, the career that you're working towards. There's so much that this could impact in your life. And with the sextile with Mars in Pisces in the 11th house, is directly tying this to the way that you are linked with your friends and your community. Um, so that can mean a lot of things for a lot of different people depending on your chart. Um, but there is going to be some element of you having shifts in yourself that is positively supported by your community right now, um, especially because you also have Venus conjunct Jupiter there in your 11th house. You guys are really having this element of uh, friendship um, and it's like finding people with like-minded interests or even having like clarity about your future direction and support from those around you and I think that that is going to feel uh, really good in this sort of destabilizing time and I don't mean destabilizing in a negative way but I do mean it um, in the sense that let me move my computer down I do mean it in the sense that you guys are going to go through some pretty big changes. So I can see you taking some risks. I can see you really evolving um, and maybe even feeling like out of your element, you know, as a Taurus, there is some part of you that really wants to take things slow, take things steady. Taurus even sounds like tortoise, um, very similar energy with this. Like you want to feel at home. You want to feel safe. You want to take things slow and be consistent. And there is something about this that is getting uh, an upgrade. Uh, you know, it's getting a shift of energy from that that turtle to become more of the hare. And so that can feel again, very destabilizing for an individual who's less used to that. Obviously it will depend on your birth chart, but there, yeah, it's just, it's just an energy that is, uh, very electric and volatile and uncertain. And so that's, what's necessary though, to bring about these kind of shifts that we need in our lives. And I think for you, the best way to move through them is to make sure you are grounding with this potato card. Make sure you are doing exercises that get your feet literally in the ground um, because there can be so many things kind of in a whirlwind around you or within you that the, you're going to have to consciously bring yourself back to your center. You're going to have to consciously bring yourself back to your tortoise, tortoise shell um, every now and then but also, of course, emerging to witness the change, to go through the change, to be open to that change. Um, and as I mentioned, this is being supported by the sextile with Mars in the 11th. So I think, again, you're having a lot of community support that's going to feel really, really good. And I think you're in this phase of intense manifestation energy, um, especially because you have Mercury in the second, sextiling Venus and Jupiter um, in your 11th. And so I think that this, again, is going to give you the opportunity to start to concretize through your mind what you want to bring out into the world, um, what you want to share with others or um, manifest in a, in a material sense. Mercury in the second is about having ideas around our finances, around our possessions, um, even around like our skill set that we use to create those uh, finances, having ideas about all those things that help 
bring these things to life. And with the sextile to Venus and Jupiter in the 11th, this is so positive because these planets are all about receiving help from the outside, um, especially in the 11th, which is a house of benefactors. And so you guys are having this really powerful moment of manifestation through the aids of others, um, through, first of all, personal understanding, oh, like um, awareness around kind of what it is you want to create and then having the universe then step in with a divine hand and put the right people and circumstances in your life to make it possible for these things to manifest. Um, and so I pulled the three of wands and I actually also pulled the two of wands. So I definitely think you are in a state of advancement where you're not just thinking about things anymore, but you're actually taking action steps to make something happen. You have a plan and you are moving forward with that plan. And with the magician card, I think that this is another indication to be aware of how powerful and magnetic your energy is right now in terms of manifesting you have the tools that you need to succeed you just need to have and embody the vision that of what you desire which is perfect with jupiter neptune and venus all in the 11th house of long-term vision um, and so again i feel like it's not just about that though it's about being supported by others and i feel like with this king of cups it's asking you to move towards whatever dynamic feels um, or whatever goal, whatever it is you're trying to achieve that feels very uh, emotionally fulfilling. So if this is having some kind of change that affects your relationships and your community and your sense of belonging, it's moving towards a community that feels like they know you in and out, that feels like you, again, belong and, and really deserve to be there. So, and if you, if that is the case, I feel like it's around people who really respect you with this king of cups. It's people who look up to your emotional maturity. They come to you for wisdom. Um, they, they know that you have answers essentially. And so I feel like you guys are reaching some level of, um, of success. Sorry, there's something in my shirt. It's like really bothering me. I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is just yarn. It feels like there's a rock in my shirt. And so with this King of Cups, I really feel like you guys are going to get so much emotional satisfaction with whatever is coming in and with all of this community support that you are receiving. With this devil card, I feel like this is helping you break out of specific mindsets that you've been stuck in um, that have been limiting you. I think that with a north node in your sign, it is a time for massive and uncomfortable growth. And the second that we try to grow beyond what we are used to, we ha experience our next level devil. And I think it's no coincidence that I pulled the devil card because you are experiencing certain mindset shifts that, that uh, first come about from having thoughts of self-doubt and uncertainty and self-sabotage and, you know, belittling yourself or keeping yourself small. And all those things appear because your body, your subconscious knows that you are up leveling and it's scared. It's trying to constrict and hold you back and keep you in this cage that you know that you don't belong in anymore. And the North Node is pushing you out of it and out of your comfort zone into growth. And so I think that this eclipse is going to help you alleviate or break free from any of those cages that you have been stuck in. And it's going to help you see those cages very, very clearly, especially again with the help of others. There's something around community and friends here that are coming in as some type of support for you. That's really going to bring you the clarity that you deserve. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus Rising. This is a very, very powerful one for you. Massive changes in many areas of your life or one big change in an area of your life, but it has a potential to touch many different life topics whenever it's in the first house. So I'd be very curious to see how this is coming about for you. If you want to comment down below and if you want to learn astrology, you can check out my, my course astrology 101, or you can get a reading from me if you just want it done for you. And I'll link those both down below. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. All right, up next, I have my fellow Geminis, but this is Gemini rising. So for you guys, this Taurus eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So this is usually a time in which a lot of subconscious things can come to the surface. And I think that it can be very interesting because it is going to definitely affect your career path or where you're going in 
your life objectives, like if you have certain goals that you're reaching towards, it doesn't always necessarily equate to your career. A lot of people have 10th house objectives that are unrelated to career. But regardless, I think a lot is being unearthed for you in the 12th house. A lot of your subconscious fears and insecurities and um, self-sabotage can come to the surface to be relinquished. And because I think that there have maybe been ways where you have been holding yourself back in your career with these four of cups and king of pentacles. I think you want to achieve the king of pentacles. You want to be a boss ass bitch. You want to be the one on top, the one making um, I mean, not everyone wants this, but many of you want this kind of career stability and success, or you want to have some sense of leadership and where people are looking up to you and you're known for what you do or for whatever this goal is, achieving some level of mastery or some level of advancement that you feel is creating a legacy or is leaving something behind for others or is benefiting others and impacting others in some way. It's not just about you. A king affects many people. A king has the authority and the skill level to reach out beyond himself. And with that four of cups next to it, I feel like you guys have been rejecting opportunities to step into that or you have been maybe experiencing significant amount of self-doubt where you have a chance to kind of throw yourself into these things and there may be times in which you instead don't want to like you can see with this guy here there's someone there's someone coming out of the water with an opportunity that can be very emotionally fulfilling but is going to take him into the depths of the water where he's kind of uncertain he doesn't know what that is experiences like he's a land person he's not a mermaid he doesn't know what it's like to have that kind of life it's it's scary um and so instead of choosing to go with her he's choosing to numb himself to go to drinking to look forlorn and say why me but the ironic thing about this is that he's choosing this he's choosing to sedate himself he's choosing to avoid conflict he's choosing to distract himself with things or invest time and energy into things that are actually not leading him to this king of pentacles situation and so i think you guys are going to become acutely aware with uranus conjunct this this eclipse in the 12th house of where you have been chaining yourself up because uranus is a planet of liberation of freedom and so i think you guys are going to realize the psychological and invisible chains you have put yourself in um, and it's going to erupt or create a breakthrough in your career with the sextile to Mars in your 10th house. Whatever objective it is you're working towards, I think it's going to impassion you, enliven you, bring you clarity, take you to those next steps. And you guys have a lot of blessings in this area of career. You have Venus and Jupiter and Neptune all in your 10th house of career, which are very spiritually driven planets and I just pulled the octopus card so I feel like one of the messages coming through for you guys is that you guys I think with the, as a being a Gemini rising and Taurus being in your 12th house this is this is essentially saying that you have you are an individual who likely has your hands in a lot of different pots maybe you have multiple jobs multiple goals multiple projects and things that you're always trying to deal with at one time but what you don't realize is how much the medicine of Taurus is needed in your life. Taurus is about being focused and succinct and following your path um, very consistently and dedicated on one path. You don't want to divert. You don't want to go on 10 different paths because you're not going to get far enough along the trail to reach the peak, to reach that king of pentacles. And so I think that one of the ways you've been self-sabotaging with Taurus in your 12 is realize, is not realizing how much you've been spreading your energy very thin and thinly thin um, and not giving yourself the opportunity for success because you are diverting your resources Um diversifying I should say and diversifying can be a really great thing but not until you've achieved a certain level of stability right you're not just going to try to have 10 different jobs if one job isn't even making you enough money maybe it's better to go all in on one job or one opportunity or one goal um, before you can actually um, feel like you are can move on to the next thing can add more things and dedicate your attention to that as well um, you guys also have Mercury in your first house, making a sextile to Venus and Jupiter in the 10th. So again, this, this divinity that's coming through your career, you have a lot of 
powers of manifestation right now in your career or your goals or your objectives, your, your future, your legacy, all these things have the power to manifest right now. And with your chart ruler Mercury just moving into your sign, it's at zero degrees of Gemini. It is feeling strong. It is feeling activated. It is feeling certain and clear and aware. And it's making a sextile to these really beautiful planets, Venus and Jupiter in the 10th. So it's making you very clear about what you value and where you are headed in the long term. Where are your goals? Where are your plans? Or is what you're doing distracting you and... Um, leaking your energy or is it or is it leading you towards what you're looking for um, and I pulled the tranquility card so I feel like even though you are having to um, do something kind of against your nature and focus very solely on the path ahead of you and ignore these distractions that Gemini's love to feed into so even though you have this this counter nature going about right now you also I think are going to experience immense tranquility from that I just felt this the sense of ease and and chills come over me as I said that and this is a 43 so 43 or 7 on this card might be relevant to you but there is something that is going to be extremely peaceful to in um, solidifying a plan and working at one thing at a time and I think that that can feel really, really scary to a Gemini or Gemini rising. The idea of cutting out options and it can feel like you are limiting yourself. When in reality, this eclipse is about liberating yourself, having total and complete freedom to and to achieve what you actually want. Because if you think about what you actually want, it's really that you want to be this king of pentacles. You want to master something. You want to achieve something big. But you're not going to be able to do that if you're investing into every little thing along the way. That's not what you actually want, even though your brain tells it you you do. Um, just because it's interesting, because it's fascinating, and you're a curious sign. And so what I feel like is happening for you guys right now is that you are achieving liberation and growth by being more concise and being more... Um, streamlined in what you are choosing to do and putting your energy more into just one basket for now and realizing that later you can add on those things so it's not saying no to these ideas it's tabling them for later so that you can bring them on board in you and fit them in your lifestyle in a very practical meaningful way when you have the capacity for it when you have abundance when you've reached this king of pentacles status and you have enough to share with others and with other opportunities so that is what i'm seeing for you gemini i feel like this is going to be a very beautiful and impactful one and i'm very excited for you um, if you want to tell me how it goes i would love for, to hear about it in the comments down below if you want an astrology reading with me i would love to give one to you or if you want to learn astrology for me i have a course called astrology 101 so you can check that all out in the description box below and i hope that you guys have a beautiful day bye all righty so up next we have my beautiful cancer rising so this taurus eclipse with uranus is in your 11th house and i definitely feel like you guys might see a shakeup in your relationships in your current ways of investing into your community into online groups um, and to any, any kind of network that you are involved in, there is some, um, change or alteration going there and even possibly affecting your future goals and aspirations and kind of how you see your future unfolding. You guys might have some realizations that come through, especially because this eclipse is sextiling Mars in the ninth, which is amazing for receiving divine inspiration and acting on it. And I feel like you guys are going to just be, I started off this reading with the 10 of wands, you guys. So I don't know my cancer risings. What have you been up to? Um, let me pull up your chart really quick. Let's see what's going on for my cancer rising. So cancer rising, you've had a lot of plants in, okay, okay, I see now. You've had Pluto in your seventh house. Um so definitely a lot of transformation going on in the area of relationships where you are finally starting to get a fresh start because after the 10 of wands, I have the two of cups, which makes so much sense um, because Pluto is really nearing the last degrees of Capricorn. Um, of course, it's going retrograde, so it's not actually like leaving or anything like that, but um, 
it's moving into Aquarius at some point. Um, let me see when exactly that is for you guys. It's moving into Aquarius in March of next year. Okay, so that's when you're really going to start to feel like this energy is alleviating from your relationships. If you've been feeling like you are entering into relationships that are testing your personal power, that are testing your um, emotional confidence and bandwidth and so much more. Um, and so I think that you guys with this Ten of Wands have been very exhausted in terms of your relationships, Ten of Wands and Two of Cups. I think that you have encountered especially romantic relationships or any kind of intimate relationship that you choose to keep the person around. They know you super well. It's a like, you know, like deep friendships or even family members that you're very close with. I think that you guys have been reaching the end of your rope in a lot of ways in that transformation and feeling a little bit tired and exhausted. Um, and Molly McCord on her Pluto podcast was talking about a soul exhaustion that comes from Pluto transits where we are just tried and tried for our endurance and it can be exhausting, like I keep saying. Um, and so I think that you guys, now that Pluto is retrograde, are finally able to start seeing what element of your relationships should continue forward and what needs to be transformed. And I think it's going to bring about this ten of wands, this feeling of being overburdened. It's going to bring that into a focus of, of greater um, love and harmony, but it's through the need to make a very big decision. Um, and this could be just an internal decision. It doesn't have to be something that you're doing necessarily like oh I'm gonna break up with this person or enter into this relationship it's not necessarily what I'm saying although that's definitely possible I think this is a more of an underlying current of do I want to continue operating this way um, from these unconscious behaviors which Pluto really brings about from these really old patterns from past lives do I want to keep operating this way or do I want to step into a stronger sense of self-confidence with this queen of wands do I want to know my worth do I want to shine my light bright and expect others to treat me that way um, and so cancer risings you might not struggle with that but you there might be something else that you struggle with that you can have more confidence in the decision that you're making around whatever that is so you'll know kind of what that is for you but there's some soul level exhaust, exhaustion relationship that's being um i feel like brought up right now to make decisions about so that it will be alleviated and it will be really alleviated when it does move into aquarius in march of next year so really good signs but ultimately what you are attracting with the six of pentacles is a relationship with equal giving and receiving as people who want to pour into you who want to show you their love and their support um, and so I know that a lot of this is interesting because I know that Pluto is in your seventh but that's um so even though Pluto is in your 11th this eclipse is happening in or sorry even though Pluto's in your seventh of intimate relationships, this eclipse is happening in the 11th house of friends. So you guys might even be attracting community and friendships that finally give equally to you, but it's because you guys are stepping up in your own self-worth, because you are demanding the attention that you deserve, that, that you get your needs met, that you be adored um, and cherished. And it's all coming from a decision that you have to make because of this soul level exhaustion of encountering people um, who are are testing your power in relationships with Pluto moving through the seventh house. So again, this eclipse with Uranus is in your 11th house. So big change up in your friend dynamics, the way that you interact with others, the way that you present yourself to the world. Um, and it's sextiling Mars in Pisces in the ninth. And so I feel like it's giving you um, this hope. And that's what I think of a lot of times with this camel is this ability to be in this dry desert, but the camel can store water. The camel can survive um, these harsh climates without the nutrients that it needs, without the water that it needs, because it has inner reserves of strength within it. And so I think that you guys um, are becoming more optimistic and becoming very spiritually connected, very divinely guided with Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune all in your ninth house. And all of this is your inner reserve and your strength that's going to help you through any dry bouts of bouts. Is that, 
I feel like dry spells in your relationships because sometimes when you make decisions of like okay I'm not going to be this way in this relationship dynamic anymore I'm not going to tolerate this I'm going to be much more confident and um, ask for what I want then sometimes we tend to see that people fall away and there can be a little bit of this dry spell where we feel like okay my whole friendship area just got a huge shake up um my my dynamics are really out with the old but there's no new yet and I'm on like I'm not really totally certain but you have the support from the universe that I think is going to bring in that that certainty with that sex health Mars in the ninth is going to give you that confidence Venus and Jupiter and Neptune in the ninth is going to give you that that soothing from spirit and it's going to give you the water that you need to move through the desert until you find the jungle again till you find your next group of friends that truly satiate you so if there's a mere a period or a, t a lapse of time where you are not having those individuals in your life that's okay because it's coming to you soon and you have the strength and the reserves to make this happen especially with mercury in the 12th sextile to venus jupiter in the ninth i feel like your spirit while it might not be thinking all this consciously your spirit knows your spirit knows it's supported and it's almost surrendering to this kind of divine process of changing up your current dynamics for things that are much more equal that are, that are much more beneficial to you as a soul because you've tolerated as a cancer rising you've been sensitive to others needs you have put emotions first and you maybe have been too passive or have tolerated stuff from people that you don't deserve for far too long for far too many lives and now is your chance to really look at those dynamics and ask yourself how you can ask for more and I just pulled the card wholeness and so I feel like and this is a 33 so that might be um, that might mean something to you. And I think that with this Aquarius also on here, there might be sometimes feelings of like you don't belong or you can't find your tribe. And this card to me with wholeness is saying you are going to feel whole on your own with this eclipse. Even if you feel different, even if you feel like there are not people around, you're going to feel whole on your own with spirit, with this inner strength. And that will lead you to create um, to attract the people into your life that reflect that beauty and that wholeness that you have within. So that is what I'm seeing for your Cancer Rising. If this unfolds for you in a similar fashion, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you want to learn astrology with me, you should definitely check out my course, Astrology 101. We have breakdowns of all the planets and it's super in-depth. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little much, um, unless you are excited about it, then it's not too much, right? Um, and then if you just want it all done for you, which I'm sure a lot of you do, I also have astrology readings, which you can check out both of those in the description box below. And I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye. All right. And up next, we have my beautiful Leo rising. So for you guys, this eclipse is happening in your 10th house. It's a Taurus eclipse, meaning the North Node is in your 10th house of career right now. And this eclipse is conjunct Uranus. So boy, are you guys having tons of energy moving through your career, helping you transition into something that will likely stimulate your leadership qualities as a Leo rising, will likely ask you to step up in some way in your career and in your life and advance in a way that you can make more of an impact like you were truly meant to do. This eclipse is also sextiling Mars in Pisces in your eighth house. Um, and you have Venus and Jupiter and Neptune all conjunct in your eighth house as well. So I feel like it's a time of healing any lasting insecurities that you've had, any trouble around intimacy, any issues with partners that you've had. It's a very healing time for all of those things, especially for crises and trauma and elements of our childhood that have been extremely challenging. Um, which as a Leo rising can definitely imprint upon you and print upon everyone um, to a large extent. So I think that you guys are being asked to make some decisions right now in your career about the direction that you want to go in. Do you want to continue down this current path that you're going in? Do you want to go all in? Or do you want to make a slight shift? Or maybe you are being asked to step into a leadership role and you have the potential to do that or being asked to move companies or anything like this. You have options right now. When I see this judgment card, there is an awakening, an enlightenment to new 
opportunities in front of you. And the magician card tells me that you have the power right now to manifest the desired outcome from these options. So if you're scared, if you're intimidated, this is not the time to allow those emotions to control you. And I don't think that they will with these beautiful planets, Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune in your eighth house. I think it's giving you the emotional salve around any insecurities that could potentially hold you back. And it's basically decreasing them so that you can move forward with a sense of optimism and faith and self-belief that will allow you to manifest like this magician all the things that you desire from these outcomes. So if you have a choice to make right now, embrace the choice that embodies you stepping up more into your career, more into your leadership, more into your ability to make an impact and have a public image. Whatever that looks like for you, that can be on a small scale, that could be on a big scale, any objective in your life that allows you to touch more people's lives, that allows you to take on more responsibility is going to be the right decision for you. And with this magician card, it's signifying that you have everything you need. You are prepared. You are ready. Even if it feels like you maybe need to get a few more ducks in a row, you do have everything that you need internally to continue. And that means the external will fall into place. So very, very exciting for you guys, especially the fact that you have so many positive plants in your eighth house, which is such a difficult and tragic um, house where we tend to really struggle emotionally. And I think that you guys are finally experiencing just a complete relinquish of some of those difficult emotions that could have impacted your life. It could have impacted your career. It could have impacted your ability to be vulnerable with others or go deep emotionally with others. Um, it could have impacted your relationships. And I think that for some of you, if you are in a partnership, you can even be increasing your shared resources through your partner. You Maybe your partner is making more money now and there is a support system here that hasn't been there before spiritually and with others and so that is going to help uplift you in your career and stabilize your emotions with this king of cups a lot of people are getting these your emotional your emotions are becoming something of an asset right now rather than something that can hold you back or feel that um is volatile or distracting in any kind of way. The King of Cups is saying that that all of that's gone. The seas have calmed and it is allowing you to move through the boat to move on the boat um, like to the island or to the next phase of your life with calm seas. So the ocean is supporting you. The wind is moving through your sails, pushing you to the right direction. And you're not having to fight against the turbulence of, of uncertainty and inner emotional dramas and difficulties from the past and all these things. It's finally being relieved. You guys also have um, this eclipse sextiling Mars in the eighth house. So it's asking you to take some element of risk, especially with Uranus here. It wants you to go out on a limb. The eighth house is also associated with risk and investments. So if there's something that feels like a leap or a jump or if out of your realm of comfort zone, this is the right thing to do. It's ultimately as your soul it's ultimately for your soul going to help you evolve into this next phase. Um, right now, Pluto is retrograde and it's helping us check in with the things that our soul is like, uh, -uh we're not doing any more of that. Or yes, we need to move more towards that because our soul is ready to go to the next chapter, check off those boxes and again, continue to evolve. And by staying in the same spot, doing the same thing, that's not going to be the answer. I also pulled the Empress card and the three of swords in reverse. So you guys are, again, healing any past wounds, especially around relationships. If anyone has let you down after you opened up to them, if anyone has taken advantage of your big heart as a Leo rising, I see a lot of this being healed and stepping into a time of fertility. And if some of you guys are wanting to create something in your own life, like start your own business or start a family, um, anything like this, this is your opportunity. There is fertile ground. The universe is conspiring in your favor, and especially with Mercury in the 11th sextiling Venus and Jupiter in the eighth. This is going to give you, I feel like the insight through friendships, through your community, through connections that can help you, um, uncover this, this, uh, fertile soil. It can also help you 
heal some of these elements of the past. So if you are connecting with your community with like-minded individuals, talking to friends about what's happened to you, it's, it's going to be an extremely healing time. And this Empress card to me is saying that you have the potential to reach incredible amounts of abundance. This and the Magician card, I mean, there you can't get that much better than that. So I feel like you guys are really stepping up in a huge way in your life and you're given this opportunity on a platter. And now the question is, will you take it? Will you be daring and adventurous and believe in yourself enough to take it? Um, and again, the second blessing to this isn't just the outward manifestation, but the inward of this vulture card of taking these really challenging experiences and changing them and transforming them into something very uplifting for you and to a strength into a power. The vulture card will also eat what's dead and create life out of it. And so I think that you guys, if you are deciding to leave something behind and, you know, with all these planets in your eighth house, there is some like rebirth happening here. If you decide to leave either some element of yourself behind, your old relationships and old pain behind, or even an old career choice behind, it's going to be extremely empowering with this vulture card. It's going to allow that to be the soil, that compost to create life for this beautiful new beginning with the Empress card. So you guys are being extremely, extremely guided through this time. And I hope that you trust that you can let go of whatever it is you need to let go of in order to succeed. And the last card that I pulled is a card that says positivity. And so I think that this is just a universe saying that you need to just believe in yourself. This also has the Leo sign on it right here. And so I think it's saying, Leo, that you can be positive and believe in the shining light of your essence of your heart of your abilities um, and take that forward into your relationships and your friendships um, your career and you will start to see the things manifesting back to you when you are confident and you believe in yourself so that is what I'm seeing Leo rising very very exciting huge eclipse for everyone but especially you because it's happening in an angular house a lot of potential to change your life direction last time I had an eclipse in my 10th house I left what I was doing for 10 years and then moved into astrology. It was not an overnight process. Eclipses take time. It could take six months, but it is something that is going to become an awareness, a thought, a feeling now that is going to be extremely important. And because Uranus is there, it could be something very sudden, very unexpected. Even if it takes time to unfold, the story will present itself and in a very almost shocking way. So I hope that you jump on it. You believe in yourself and you trust in yourself to act on this because you can achieve the greatness that you're looking for. So again, that's what I'm seeing for you, Leo Rising. If this manifests similarly, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. And if you guys want to learn astrology, I have an, I have a course astrology 101 and I also give astrology readings. So if you're interested in either one of those, that is in the description box below. And I hope that, that you guys have a great day. Bye. All right. Up next, we have my fellow Virgo rising. So for you guys, this Taurus eclipse is happening in your ninth house conjunct Uranus. So lots of major changes being in the ninth house. There might be some new elements of things that you can grow and study um, something that you maybe haven't considered doing before, uh, especially I just pulled the hermit card. There can be a lot of elements of self-study as well. The ninth house is a very spiritual and religious house where we are pursuing our greatest sense of self, um, and personal growth. So I see people like studying subjects and traveling the world and discovering parts of themselves through that process. And I think with this hermit card, you guys are uncovering many different facets of yourself and especially of your relationships because this eclipse is sextiling Mars in Pisces in the seventh house and you have Venus and Jupiter and Neptune all in your seventh house of relationships. And so very strong energy here for optimism and excitement and love and passion and idealism coming through the area of partnerships. And it doesn't just have to be your partner that you're dating. It could be your partner that you are friends with, your partner that you work with, somebody that you choose to keep around in your life. And I think that you guys are maybe having some, again, some deeper understandings of yourself that will lead to a deeper connection and understanding of your relationships um, and the way of, of relating with others. Okay. Every single person is getting this magician card. It's kind of crazy. So again, the ninth house is one that is very lucky. Um, the ninth 
11th and 5th houses can be very lucky houses. They tend to bring a lot of support from the universe for things to grow and to expand. And with this magician card, you are having powers of manifestation that is being supported by the universe right now. So if you're seeing signs and synchronicities, these are leading you down some type of path for you to manifest some objective that feels really exciting for you, whether that's in your career and your personal life, it doesn't matter, but it's something that you have the power to create from your own two hands, something that your choices and your beliefs are going to mold. So it's going to be important to be mindful of your own energy and positivity at this time. And with the eclipse happening here with Uranus in the ninth, I think it is bringing about a sudden sh shift into positivity because you're realizing that anything is possible if you just believe. Okay, so um, Mercury in the 10th is also sextiling Venus and Jupiter in the 7th. So there is a potential for you, especially with Mercury being your planetary ruler, um, there's a potential for you to really get some beautiful insights about your next career direction, especially through talking to people, through your partners. Um, maybe you have even a potential to work with someone specifically um, to get some kind of goal across or some idea across. No, to achieve some sort of goal is what I'm trying to say. So, um, so yeah, I definitely feel like there is a lot of support within your relationships that is ultimately feeding to some type of goal or career objective or life objective, like a life milestone. The 10th house doesn't just have to be what we're trying to do in our career, even though it often is. It could be this desire to get married, to have kids, to settle down, to do some big milestone thing that the world then sees and recognizes as a formal step in a, a different committed direction. Um, so I definitely feel like you guys might have some type of plan that is informed by your relationship. Um, you guys might have some something um, come in from other people. You're being supported by other people and creating some objective with that person. Um, so again, working together with someone on something, creating something with someone. Um, those are all potentials for you. And with all these really beautiful planets in your seventh house, it's such strong energy of, of, of uh, being divinely supported and guided in these dynamics that you can expect the best. You can expect things to work out the, the way that you wanted. And the things to keep in mind is that Eclipse energy takes six months to unfold. So even though Uranus is here, you might get the divine insight at this time. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to immediately unfold and make sense in its entirety how things are going to happen right now. Um, it could take the full six months to be clear about what this thing is. You know, you could you could think you know what it is right now and, and start working on that. And then, you know, the actual manifestation of it could take more time. Um and I just pulled the two of swords. So I think the other element here um, that you guys are being gifted with Mercury making that sex held to Venus and Jupiter and with this eclipse sex telling Mars as well is hopefully becoming more decisive uh, because when you're more positive and feeling like you're more supported by the universe and like you can truly trust and have faith in the process, the two of swords doesn't become an issue anymore. You're not this back and forth energy and uncertainty that can come with the challenges of being a Mercury ruled sign. You can see all sides of things and you can really kind of get in your head about what the right thing to do is, especially as a perfectionistic Virgo rising, you might feel like there's a one right answer and one wrong answer. And it can feel like a lot of pressure that can lead to indecisiveness or uncertainty or this back and forth. And so I feel like this eclipse is giving you the sense of a strong, certain next step. Your chart ruler just moved into Gemini. It is clear in the mind. You are feeling much more grounded in terms of your mental faculties, much more aware. And then on top of that, it's having this really beautiful support from Venus and Jupiter and coming through your relationships. I think talking to others, interacting with others, working with others is going to bring about even more clarity in your career. And I think it's going to end that indecisiveness and bring about the the joys that you're looking for. And the elephant card, you guys, this is a card of removing your obstacles. And that's why I said, if you just have faith, anything is possible here. And I feel like you guys having faith in yourself with this eclipse in the ninth is reinvigorating your soul to make you realize that you can eliminate anything in your path. The elephant just takes its big trunk and like removes the debris 
uh, you know, it has so many resources available to it. It's huge. It can't be stopped. And that is you when you're pairing with spirit, when you're having faith in the process. You guys, nothing is going to hold you back. Even when obstacles do show up in your way, which I'm sure they will because it's life, it's not going to stop you. It might delay you, but it's not going to deter you. And I feel like if you can just keep remembering that, that will be the easiest thing for you in order to feel at peace with your decisions. The next card I have is focus. This also came in for the Gemini rising group. And I want you guys to go back and listen to that one as well, because you are a Mercury ruled sign as well. But one of the things that I was telling them with this focus card is that there is a need right now to really hone in on the things that you are trying to manifest and get super, super clear about what it is and make sure that the focus is narrow enough so that the energy that goes through that point is stronger because if the focus is wider, the energy is dispersed. And so you guys are having the opportunity to become laser focused, laser, like the energy all, um, diluted not diluted but you know what I mean the the energy in all one area like laser is literally a light you know it's a bunch of like wavelengths that make up light and that when it's super super focused can cut through metal and it's literally just waves of light like we turn on lights all the time and they don't damage anything right just think about that if you can focus like that like a laser you have the potential to make incredible things happen. And so I think that's what this this is telling you right now, to not get distracted, to not um, become indecisive, to not get caught up in your head, which a Mercury soul, ruled sign can do, to just really have faith and trust and take action, move forward, work with others, get support from others, and you'll notice that you can literally do anything that you set your mind to. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Virgo Rising. If that resonates, if you have similar experiences happening right now, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. If you guys want an astrology reading with me, if you want to learn astrology from me, I will have links for both of those in the description box below. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Libra rising. So for you guys, this Taurus eclipse is happening in your eighth house and it is conjunct Uranus. So this could be a time in which you guys are, oh my gosh, everyone is getting this card. Everyone's getting like a handful of the same cards. King and Queen of Cups, the Magician card, the Judgment card, these are all major players. So um, being in the eighth house, which is typically in modern astrology associated with Scorpio, associated with deep emotions and intimacy and vulnerability, I think that you guys, um, this is kind of a sensitive point to have an eclipse, to be activated, to be cracked open. It's like taking your heart with a hammer and a chisel and just widening, widening up so the light can come into it and can come out of it and for people to truly see your authenticity. And so that might really be coming through for you right now that you guys are just kind of going through these maybe deeper um, emotional waves right now with this eclipse it could feel like you are being asked to step into again like these just kind of like wearing your heart on your sleeve in a way um which is interesting and if you have a partner um there can be some changes in the area of your shared resources. So maybe one of you guys could be increasing in finances or um, getting inheritance or something of that nature. Um, that's also possible, especially because this is a Taurus eclipse and conjunct Uranus. Like expect the unexpected. You don't really know what's, what's going on um, underneath the surface of this. You guys also have Venus and Jupiter and Neptune conjunct in Pisces in your sixth house. So the sixth house is an area concerned with our health. It's also related to dynamics in which there's inequality. So working for someone like subordinates or working like hiring others, which are you being the boss um, type of thing. It's also related to like our mental health as well as just our work in general. 
Um, and so you guys might notice that those specific areas of your life are starting to improve. You might feel much more beautiful. You might feel like you're going through a glow up, um, like it's easier to stay consistent with your health. Um, although I would say Venus and Jupiter can sometimes lead to overdoing things. I also feel like with Mars here, especially, and with this eclipse sex telling Mars in the six, that you are gaining the motivation that you need to succeed in your consistency in this area of your life. And you might just feel very vibrant and alive in a different kind of way than you've done before. And a lot of it is because I think in a way you might be doing some deep emotional purging with this eclipse in the in Uranus in the eighth house where you're just releasing and sloughing off a lot of this baggage where it's no longer important to you. It's no longer holding you back. There's no longer a need to wear a mask or hide yourself or anything like that. You're just being super, super, super authentic. And like showing, yeah, showing your heart, playing, like showing your cards, um, not hiding things. With Uranus in the eighth, I feel like it's it's holding up this light and a mirror in this dark room that you've had hidden within your within your vessel. Um, and so I feel like this emotional release is creating this absolute freedom uh, that then allows you to go all in into your work, to go all in into your health, to feel like whatever relationships you are having within your career are improving or are feeling much more balanced and much more equal. Um, and so I feel like it's helping you guys achieve a sense of emotional liberation that is going to help you, um, is going to help you in just like your daily life, if that makes sense. Like, uh, I'm not going to worry so much with the Eight of Swords. I'm not going to have so much anxiety. Um, sometimes the eclipse could bring up anxiety. It could bring up with this purging of emotions, could bring up some negativity, but it's so that it doesn't hold on to you anymore. Again, it's a purging. It's a releasing. Pluto going retrograde. It's helping us see what has to be released to move forward as a soul. And so I feel like you guys are doing that from the depths of your being. You're releasing those anxieties, those worries, those self-doubts, those insecurities, anything that could have impeded you from deep connection with others. And you're stepping into the queen of cups, really being intuitive, really being a force of nature, being super in touch with yourself and owning your emotions in a way that doesn't control you, um, but allows you it to be some kind of superpower. You can see this is like a cauldron here where she's having the light and the water sitting over her heart. So this is her emotional nature. And it's also the cauldron of her manifestation. So she's able to now harness her emotions for good, for her plans, for the future, um, to decide kind of where she wants to go next, what she wants to do with this. And I think a lot of this vision of the future is coming through having Mercury in your ninth house, making a sex held to Venus and Jupiter in the sixth. And it's going to help you see maybe where you can improve um, things with your mental health, as well as where you can improve things with your health, what your plan is for that, what your plan is for your work and your routines, how you want to get on it and how you want to really um do things that benefit you as as an individual do things that really like show yourself a lot, a lot of love and support um and i feel like when you do purge those difficult emotions those are the emotions that lead to us wanting to avoid things or us wanting to um, self-sabotage and not take care of ourselves, And so by purging them, I feel like you're clearing the air and you're becoming healthier all around and making healthier just daily decisions because of that. And I just pulled the cosmic egg for you guys. So this is a really big one. Let me see what this says in the book. Completion, harmony, the infinite within the finite. The cosmic egg is a final card in this animal spirit deck, and it represents the unfolding of cosmic consciousness. The state emerges after we have tread the path for quite some time through self-effort and grace. We experience self-realization. A sense of contentment and oneness spontaneously arises within us, and the veils of our self-limiting beliefs are lifted. This is exactly what I was saying. You guys are breaking free from these insecurities and imposed limitations and getting anxiety and, and feeling like you're stuck when you're not stuck at all. You're actually so free. You can plan big things for the future. And now your emotional nature is on your side. Your mind is on your side because you're reaching a completion process or an almost like an awakening process that will allow you to just believe in yourself without all this guck in the way or muck. Um, 
When the essence of the cosmic egg has not been activated, we feel as if we will never get there or that we travel alone, disconnected from others. What did I say? This, this, oh my God, I'm getting like, this eclipse is, is lifting the veil that has separated you from this deep, intimate connection with others. And it can make you feel isolated. It can make you feel separate because of the trauma that we hold. And I think that this cosmic egg is helping you and this eclipse is helping you to lift up all those insecurities, all that dirt to release it, to purge it so that you can have this really deep emotional connection with others and truly believe in yourself, truly believe that your next beautiful beginning is coming. Even if you, if even if I, uh, even if our counter with this card is brief, appearing as a glimmer or a flash of interconnectedness, its potent energy stays with us. This egg is a remedy for the fragmentation of modern life. It's through the power of this card that we're reminded of the cosmic contract written at the beginning. We hold on to light. We hold on to life and life holds on to us. The journey is complete, but it does not end. Okay. Awesome. I feel like that's really saying that you're just being so lovingly supported right now. Um, in so many different ways. And I think that you're finally going to let it in. You're finally going to let in the good stuff. And then the last card I pulled is a transition card. So we're all going through some transition right now. Um, let me also read this one. This has an 11 on it as well. So maybe there's something that resonates there or 1111. All right. So this card says, cauliflower heralds a change. This might have happened recently be happening soon or the energy around a change is unsettled a rebirth can now take place i literally use that word rebirth because that's what the eighth house eclipse is going to bring a significant rebirth and if you're holding on to what has gone before it's time to let go for good a reactivation can take place in any area of your life that has there has been a lull and a, sec a setback so i feel like you guys if you've been feeling like there has been a lull in your health or your career or like you haven't been moving forward. You're never going to get there. Th those messages are coming in with these cards. This is here to tell you that it was actually an emotional limitation that you've imposed upon yourself through your mindset and through old trauma and old things that you're holding on to. And this eclipse is helping you purge and release that so you can have those new beginnings and mostly so that you can believe that you can have those new beginnings because that's truly the only difference between before and now after this eclipse and it's going to help re relieve some of these distances or this wall that you could put up between you and your goals you and your loved ones you and anything else that could have the potential to hurt you you're finally letting those down letting everything in and it's this rebirth that's happening in your life because of that. And it's going to allow you to make much healthier decisions across the board for all elements of your life, especially health and your daily routine and your work. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing for you, Libra Rising. If that resonates and if you have a story unfolding similar to that, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. If you want an astrology reading from me, if you want to learn astrology, you can check that out in the description box below as well. And I hope that you guys have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Scorpio rising. So for you guys, this eclipse is in Taurus, happening in your seventh house conjunct Uranus. So definitely bringing a lot of energy into the area of other people in your life. This can represent changes for other people that are in your life, um, or it can represent changes in your dynamics and relationships. And you guys have had the south node transiting through your first house, which is a massive time of shedding and of detaching from things that you are normally identifying with. And that can be challenging in general. And this moon being on your north node and being in your seventh house, that area that of our chart that is projected, that feels slightly unavailable to us at times can be a destabilizing one, especially with Uranus there. And so it's a time to definitely be very gentle with yourself as you are exploring the different ways that you pursue relationships. I think that the difference between Taurus and Scorpio is they're both concerned with partnerships. Taurus is a Venus ruled sign. So it's underlying desire is consistency and stability and harmony in partnerships. Scorpio has this innate desire for transformation 
And it can bring in power dynamics into partnerships where there can be sometimes imbalances. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and Mars, Mars traditionally, and it's the planet of war and taking what you want and passions and desires and tumultuousness. And it's not a stable sign, even though it's fixed, it's not a stable sign because it's constantly having new iterations of itself. And so I think that there is a desire through this eclipse to create some sense of constancy in your relationships through change. <laughs> so it's like we're going through this sort of scorpionic or erratic revolution in our relationships, even though it's a Taurus ruled sign that this eclipse is happening in, or it's a Taurus sign. Um, so even though like the nature of it might feel scorpionic because we have Uranus here asking for change and liberation. Um, and it's an eclipse, which also brings that. And Pluto's now retrograde. Ultimately, it's actually going to solidify into something much more Taurian in the end, something much more consistent and very stable, operating from a place of harmony and love and mutual understanding rather than this place of fighting for what you need and having to purge your heart out to get what to get this connection and the really deep and challenging and sometimes dark sides that Scorpio can experience in relationships. And so your soul really wants this lifetime to experience a revolution in partnerships and, and family dynamics and friendships, anything where you feel very close with the people that you are with. It wants those things to become much more stable and much more supportive for you. And, um, I think that this eclipse is ultimately going to bring that right now. And I think that's why I pulled this justice card. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's this balancing of the scales. I think that you guys have had to do a lot of shedding and transformation and adjustments and facing old things and purging things and moving through psychological crises and pulling walls and barriers down to grow intimate and close. And it's just, what if you just had a really easy relationship. What if you just woke up and kind of knew how things would be that day and didn't have the turmoil of all the deep psychological processes that Scorpio has to go through? What if it were just fun? What if it were just simple? And I feel like ultimately the changes that are happening right now in your realization about others, about what you've tolerated in your life about what you've gone into in your life it's all been a lot of drama in some form of another whether it's caused by other people or whether you have been unintentionally open to it or have even started it yourself even just emotionally even just internally even if it's what not something you present to the world all of these things are being dove into right now so that you can create something much again simpler more solid, more consistent, more stable, more supportive, something that can last the test of time, something that's sustainable. And this kind of drama, ener high energy transformation, like these are all things that you embody, but your relationships don't need to be like that. With Taurus in your seventh house, your relationships can feel like they are smooth sailing. And so I think this eclipse is trying to give you that gift right now. I also pulled the high priestess in reverse. So I do think that some of you um, may have not trusted your intuition in relationships at certain points about how to react or certain ways to behave or certain ways to talk or think in, in regard to another person. You maybe have ignored that part of yourself or tried to be overextending yourself or very loving or whatever, and you ignore that intuition. And this is trying to flip back up and tell you to utilize your very intuitive nature within your relationships as well so that you can stop anything that could become drama in the long run. I just had cards fall out of here. Wow. Wow. I feel like these readings have been just so divinely guided today. I have been getting chills. I've been feeling so connected. These messages just hit home to me. Um, and so I'm very excited to share the fact that three cards just randomly just fell out and they're all in line with what I'm saying. So first of all, you have the four of wands, the fool and the three of pentacles. So these are very, very beautiful for relationships. First of all, the fool is telling me that there is a new slate here, a new beginning here in your 
partnerships, in your friendships, in your work dynamics, especially with the three of pentacles, people that you've worked with, you might have had some of this drama come in in that area of your life. Um, that's not always going to be the case for everyone. It could be people who you went to school with or people who you're trying to like do something with, like you're trying to like literally anyone, <laughs> anyone that's that you need to accomplish a certain goal of yours, right? There could have been issues along the way, like little bumps in the road, frustrations with Mars that comes in, you know, as your chart, as your ruler, traditional ruler, some power plays, dynamics, like people being manipulative, people being cruel, people ignoring you. Like, I don't know if any element like that coming in with these people that are just that you have to interact with to achieve some type of goal. And I feel like it's saying that you have a new slate now. And I think that this eclipse is going to help you attract totally different individuals that will help you achieve your goal in a very peaceful and streamlined way that feels very supportive and feels, again, simple and easy. And then with the four of wands, I think that this is also true for romantic partnerships and any other kind of really intimate friendships. It's going to feel like a time of celebration with this four of wands card where you're with that person and you feel like exactly how you should feel. You feel at home. You feel joyous. You feel content. And I think that this eclipse, again, is going to help you bring that more into your life. And I pulled the void of course moon, which says missing. And I feel like what's missing here is all of the stuff, all of the energy, all of the chaos. Like it's, it's just so much simpler when all this stuff is missing from the equation. And again, I feel like this eclipse is going to bring that for you. This eclipse is also sex telling Mars in your fifth house. So it's bringing about that passion and that liveliness in your fifth house of creativity. Um, and it's asking you to tap into that, tap into your sexuality, tap into your desires, express those things in these partnerships, in these friendships, in these, in these um, dynamics. And I think, again, when you have this eclipse take place, I think it's ultimately going to help you see very clearly the relationships that you feel like you can't come alive in that you can't express your sexual nature or you can't express your creativity and you can't be playful like a child with them or you can't trust them and, and just enjoy yourself with them. The fifth house is pleasure, just you enjoying yourself. And so the sex house with Mars here is just telling me that you're going to become acutely aware of the relationships that give you this space to do this and that turn you on in that way and the ones that don't. And I feel like the high priestess is asking you, to trust your intuition about those that shouldn't be here, those that don't need, that don't contribute to this feeling of happiness and invest further and attract more, the ones that do. And I will say with Pluto going retrograde now in your, um, um, let me see, which house is it in for you? Pluto going retrograde in your third house of communication and thoughts. Um, it's basically a time in which the third house is a lot about networking and the way that we are sharing ideas with others. So a lot of the communications and, and our ability to connect with others will come to the forefront to be analyzed about what you need to let go of from the past and what you need to move towards. And the newness about what should fill its place when you let go of something won't always just come right in. So if you do let go of a dynamic or think about things differently or communicate differently, you might not have, you might have to let something of that go before having all the answers about what takes its place. So just recognize that that's, that's the potential and then that's okay. Um, you guys also have Venus, Jupiter and Neptune. I think I wrote this down. Oh, yeah. Um, you guys also have Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune. Um, some of the most positive planets. Those are in your fifth house. So all of that pleasure, all of that joy that I'm talking about that you're really supposed to sink into your sexuality, your creativity, your fun, your childlikeness, all of that is being very divinely supported. The universe wants to see things be easy for you. I think Scorpios come in here with a soul contract to kind of go through it emotionally, like go through it physically, go through some massive crises and, and 
challenges and it, you just you're associated with Hades the god of the underworld you are very well aware of the shadow and the light but I think that this eclipse season is trying with the north node in Taurus to bring you more to a grounded place of not having to always go down into the shadow and to re-experience everything but to just where these planets is really beautiful wonderful divinely guided planets in the area of pleasure for you it's just trying to give you guys this sense of peace enjoyment and fun and simplicity in life that you guys seriously deserve and it doesn't have to be this whole thing right it's not, it's like a time of taking away some of this pressure um, and i just pulled the golden egg for you some of this pressure of change and metamorphosis it can be overwhelming and unnecessary sometimes um, let me pull one more card and then I'll read that one for you. So I think all these planets again in your fifth house is is trying to call you towards that. And then ah, the focus card, I keep getting this for everyone. This feels different for you though. The focus card to me here is really talking about where your focus goes, your energy flows. And so I think that as a Scorpio, you are used to encountering these difficult circumstances, these crises, these moments of transformation. You're used to encountering it, jumping into it head on, dealing with conflict. Again, Mars will time, going into the battlefield. But now you have to shift your focus into working on the garden instead of going to the battlefield. And so there's a, a very, very big shift in energy in your heart space and a big shift in the things that you think about and the things that the way that you perceive things, especially Pluto moving through your third house. So you guys need to be aware if your energy starts drawing back to the old, to the battle, to wanting to stand up for yourself, to defend things, to, um, uh, to again, like put yourself through unnecessary things. I don't, I, I think you know what I'm saying without me having to explain the kinds of energy that that you experience as a Scorpio, you you embody it, and so your focusing now needs to be on the simple things that bring you pleasure and bring you joy every single day, and using that as the barometer of whether or not something is for you or isn't for you, and really tuning into that. Okay, so now let me read the golden egg explanation. Okay. With the golden egg lives a precious sound. Deep within that sound resides a message. The sound cannot be heard, nor the message discerned until we, we retreat from the noise of modern day life. The magical essence of the golden egg needs warmth, quiet, and time to unfold. No rushing, pushing, or grasping. Find a place of deep and restful ease. Find a place of deep and restful ease. I mean, I feel like this is just the mantra for your life right now. Like what feels easy? What feels rejuvenating? What makes me feel rested and filled up? And I think that this card is trying, it's talking about meditation. It's talking about taking time out. Yeah, you can do that, but it's not about, uh, oh, I have the word on the tip of my head. It's not about disengaging from your life to get this sense of comfort. It's about being engaged in the right activities. You don't have to separate yourself from others. You don't have to go into a zone of meditation on a peak in the Himalayas. You know, that's not what this is about, I feel. I think it's about just being very comfortable and content. Um, okay. It says it requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with vulnerability. When a feeling of tenderness or gratitude arises from deep within you, know that you are well on your way. So tenderness and gratitude. So that is a Venus ruled sign. Tenderness, right? Mars is this really activated, fiery, defensive, like prickly planet. And so can Scorpios, you can be that way. You're very protective of, the, of yourself. But there's something that needs to soften. There's something that needs to become tender. And there is a deep desire for like soul merging with the Scorpio, for a really deep connection. 
but can you find that vulnerability and that connection through a different avenue of tenderness than maybe you've experienced before? And a simplicity of relationships and an ease of relationships and other elements of your life that feels like it's a breath of fresh air or a medicine for a sore throat. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. Um, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this, but you also have Mercury in the eighth house, sextiling uh, Venus and Jupiter in your fifth. So this is going to, again, kind of asking for that vulnerability and that tenderness to shine through to improve your sense of joy and your relationships and everything in your life. So again, that's what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. If that resonates, let me know what you're experiencing in the comments down below because I really benefit from hearing about all of you guys. And if you want an astrology reading from me or you want to learn astrology with me, check out those offerings in the description box below. And I hope you guys have a beautiful eclipse. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Sagittarius rising. So for you guys, this Taurus eclipse is happening in your sixth house of work, health, daily routines, and it's conjunct Uranus here as well. So you might have some big unexpected changes coming in through that area of your life. And as I said that, I pulled the death card, which is about some transformation, the ending of one thing that evolves into something else. Um, and really big deals. You have had Pluto moving through your second house for a while now. So it could be related to something financial as well. There is a transformation of something, you guys. Some Something, especially in your work, your healthy responsibilities that... I feel like I said this in the last one too. But I feel like there's something here that you guys are realizing... Um, needs to change and with the four of pentacles again i think it could somehow be related to finances and stability i mean this is a taurus eclipse which is trying to bring us to greater stability so the way that you manage your finances could be shifting and i again i really am thinking back to the last one video i did i think that these might be related um but there is some something going on here where you're like changing the way that you manage your finances you're changing your job so that you have different financial like uh, income or different financial status. I don't know. I feel like your foundations are really being improved, if that makes sense. I feel like the work that you've been doing and you've been hustling for is going to pay off in some way where it's going to make you feel like you have this really solid ground to land on. And you guys have some really beautiful planets in the fourth house, as well as this this eclipse making a sextile to Mars in your fourth house. So I feel like this desire for stability and emotional stability, like financial stability, stability within the home, stability within your personal relationships, every facet of this is going to be activated this time with Mars here and is going to give you the drive and the ambition to do what you need to do to, to take action, to make decisions that will help manifest a sense of security within you. You guys also have Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune all in your fourth house of home and family. And so these really beautiful planets that give us this feeling of ease and comfort and abundance and satisfaction and even divine protection, those are all going to come into the area of your home and family environment. And with the Six of Cups, it's my, it might be possible to have a really... A time when you create really beautiful memories or when you look back onto really beautiful childhood memories or when you see childhood friends and reminisce and just have these very beautiful relationships with your family members or people who you grew up with, having these kind of like nostalgic moments come back into your life, but things that feel really like lighthearted, like a Disney movie, <laughs> you know, it's like coming back to those eight, that age again when you were a child and you remember all the fond things about the, the innocent time of your life. And I think that that's the feeling that I'm getting from this, this like universal blessing that we're all getting with these planets is coming to you in the area of your emotional happiness linked with your past, your childhood, your family, um, your memories and bringing you back down memory lane in some form or another by re-experiencing it now, by thinking about it, by being with old people in whatever way that comes through. You guys also have Mercury in the seventh house, just moved into Gemini. 
and it is sextiling Venus and Jupiter in the fourth. So really great conversations again with your family members, with people you grew up with. Um, just I feel like gaining a lot of clarity with them, having amazing conversations, feeling like it's exciting, it's fun. You're re again reliving this these kind of past nostalgic things. Maybe you're traveling back home and seeing old friends. Maybe you are watching old movies or old videos that remind you of them like I don't really know but there's some element here of feeling really grounded and secure working on that dollar dollar bill maybe having some big changes in your finances um, and your perception of your worth and everything to make that happen and then this other completely different story about having this beautiful connection with your lineage and with your with your past and with your ancestors and your friends and all these things and let me pull a card for you. I got the emotion card. Okay, the fourth house is where we store our emotional nature. With all these really beautiful planets here, I feel like your emotions are overflowing. I'm feeling the Ace of Cups energy with so much love to give, so much nurturing coming from within you that you want it to overflow and extend that to, to others. Um, so again, I feel like this is just a really like emotionally fortuitous time for you all, uh, for you and all of your connections, really great conversations. Um, it just feels extremely uplifting. And then I pulled the cosmic egg for you. Everyone is getting these intense ones. This is a crown chakra card. Um... Is that all it says? Oh, here we go. Completion, harmony, the infinite within the finite. I think I already read this one for another group. This represents the unfolding of cosmic consciousness. And it emerges after we've tread the path for quite some time. Through self-effort and grace, we experience self-realization. A sense of contentment and oneness spontaneously arises within us. And the veils of self-limiting beliefs are lifted. Um, so yeah, it's just a time in which I think you're going to feel really connected to the universe, connected to those around you. You're going to feel an abundance of love and supportive energy, and it's going to help you create this new way, um, in your emotional stability as well as future financial stability. And, and it's going to help you make any changes that you need to make in your life. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Sagittarius rising. If that resonates, please let me know by commenting down below what you're starting to experience around this eclipse. And if you want an astrology reading from me or you want to learn astrology, you can check out my links in the description box below. Have a great day. Bye. All right, up next I have my beautiful Capricorn risings. So for you guys, this Taurus eclipse with Uranus conjuncted is happening in your fifth house of dating and pleasure and romance and fun. And as I said that, I pulled the page of wands, which to me is this exactly. It's this desire to pursue the things that light us up, that feel inspirational, that create that internal fire and desire within us. And this might be expressing yourself more sexually. This might be expressing your creative side or starting a new hobby or even having a new chapter and a new beginning in the relationship with your children that feels so much more alive and fun and exciting. And I also pulled the fool card. So I feel like some of you guys could be, have, could be having um, a new beginning. This card is coming out for so many people. You could be having a new beginning um, in, in some type of creative area of your life or some type of way that you express yourself, like I just was mentioning, or in your relationship with your children or with your dating life. I also pulled the four of swords, or sorry, the five of swords in reverse. So I feel like you guys are letting go of maybe some kind of like combative, uh, dynamics that could have been appearing or um even like a a victim mentality or a way of like feeling like you had to fight for what you wanted out of life and you couldn't just move with ease and with flow and enjoy kind of what was in front of you um i get the sense of struggle essentially in some area of your life that you are now releasing that it doesn't have to be a struggle anymore and I feel like um, if this is in some kind of dynamic, you and that person, that relationship is shifting. If this is your relationship with a passion project or with your own self-expression, it's not so much of a struggle. You're not fighting upstream to, 
to be your authentic self, to, to do the things that bring you joy. It's less standing in your way, essentially. And this eclipse is making a beautiful sextile to Mars in your third house. So I think a lot of this is coming from your willpower right now uh, to kind of make things happen. And I also feel like with Jupiter and Venus and Neptune all conjunct in your third house, you are getting a massive cleansing and upgrade of your mental fortitude, of the way that you look at life. You are being released of some of your more negative mindsets, any kind of victim thinking, any kind of like conflict internal conflict. I think a lot of these things are being released and it's allowing you to be very present in the moment and to enjoy the short term for what it is. Because that's what the fifth house is. It's about what makes me happy today? And so is Taurus in a lot of ways. While they do kind of plan and do things for long term, they are very much a present sign. They are very much concerned with what they need to do today to build happiness tomorrow and today. <laughs> um, and so I feel like there's an interesting mix going on here where there's part of you that is building long-term happiness by focusing on short-term happiness, not getting so stuck in your head, not worrying yourself so much. And this transition card is a card of rebirth. And so I think that you guys are really being reborn in terms of the way that you think, in terms of the way that you speak and interact with others, um, the types of people that you connect with, and the things that you are interested in, the hobbies that you're pursuing, the skills that you're developing. They're all shifting because your mindset is shifting. And I think that you're moving into something that is, again, filled with less resistance. It's like whatever you're going towards is like a bee with honey or I don't know what they say, a, a, a moth to light, like something that just attracts so naturally and just happens naturally that you don't have to like push and move through this muck and this heaviness to get there. It's like you don't have to put so much effort. It just kind of happens. It just kind of flows. It's just fun as it's going on. And if this is a, if this is a dynamic, it's improving that dynamic. If this is a situation is improving that so it's like a well-oiled machine and it just flows and there isn't again this kind of restriction and tenseness there that's so unnecessary so it just feels like very joyous very light in a lot of ways um, and I think it's such a gift to have the sex out to Mars in the third house because then your actions are coming from that place of your of your new and evolved thinking your the rebirth that's happening in your conscious mind is then informing your decisions okay well I'm not going to worry so much and so what d different decisions do I make when it's not coming from fear when it's not coming from worry when I can just follow joy um, and I think you're going to be really surprised by the outcome and I pulled the phoenix I think that you guys have been through a lot and I think that you guys are emerging from these challenging situations um, to finally have again, this completely different mindset about life. I don't think this Phoenix card is something that came lightly. I think that you guys have been through a significant amount of BS and Pluto is, is moving through the last few degrees of your sign in Capricorn. And so in March of next year, March of 2023, you're going to finally be free of Pluto's heaviness and it's just like this last little bit that you guys are purging and processing and understanding about your unconscious and these habits that you've held on to and things that you've been operating under with without awareness and on autopilot and I think this is like this eclipse season this last year is your time to make these massive revolutions you've already done so much of this work you've already put in so much of this effort you don't have to do much more you're at the the last mile of this 40 mile race you know you are nearing the finish line and this phoenix card to me is saying you are already having this re-emerging this rebirth taking place right now and i think it's going to continue over the course of the next year until pluto is completely out of your sign but i think this is a massive step forward by not having the normal chains of saturn with which reminds me of this five of swords it's like this contempt, this discord, this distance, feeling separate, feeling like life is hard, feeling you have to battle through things. Like that's such Saturn energy, which is your ruling planet. And yeah, Saturn is squaring the nodes. So you guys are having to having to make some major shifts in yourself right now. And you're really being presented with 
the past and having to break the mold of that past. But you have so much beautiful energy in your third house. You have so much supportive energy to help the mindset shifts. And that changes everything. So it really, even though Saturn is squaring the nodes and it's requiring this continued evolution for you and, you know, pushing yourself, the energy is on your side, which means it's very much possible. The cards are in your favor. You just have to keep playing to win. And you guys also have Mercury in the sixth house, making a sex house to Venus and Jupiter in the third. So I feel like the shift in your mindset is also contributing to a lot of success and happiness and contentedness in just your overall mental health, your physical health, and like your daily life. So how you perceive your work, how you take on responsibilities, how you take care of yourself, how you do your taxes, like all those things are becoming easier to manage because your mind is easier to manage. And so the mind can make everything so much worse or it can uncomplicate things. It can remove the drama. It can remove the conflict. And I feel like that's really what's going on here is this rising from the ashes of this devil card or this previous mindset that would have made your life much more difficult. And it's emerging into a life filled with more passion, more pleasure, focusing on the now, focusing on what brings you joy. And I think through this experience, you're going to cultivate long-term happiness as well. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Capricorn Rising. If that resonates, please do let me know by commenting down below what you're going through. That helps my practice significantly, and I appreciate your support in that way. And if you want to support in other ways, you can purchase an astrology reading or purchase my course on Astrology 101, which I linked down below. All right. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. All right. Up next, we have my beautiful Aquarius Risings. So for you guys, this Taurus eclipse is happening with Uranus, conjunct it in your fourth house of home, family, emotional well-being, ancestry, all of those wonderful things. And uh, I really feel like having an eclipse here in such a foundational part of our chart in the one of the angular houses is definitely an opportunity for a huge reboot of the way that you see yourself, the way that you see your life, the way that you process things emotionally. And it can even bring about changes to physical things like where you live or your family dynamic, maybe having another child or uh, having breakthrough conversations with family members or realizations about yourself and your childhood that create this feeling of liberation because Uranus is here to liberate us, to make us feel lighter, to make us feel freer. And with this Ace of Cups, to me, this is the emotional renewal that I'm talking about. An Ace of Cups is an emotional opportunity. Time to turn a new leaf. Time to feel like you are moving forward in life. You're not stuck anymore. Like you can believe in yourself. Like you are, I feel like creating this sense of stability and this groundedness that you've maybe been desiring for a while but grounded into something that's emotionally fulfilling. I think that's that's the area of difficulty as many of us have been trying to grow things, but maybe it wasn't as fulfilling as it could have been or the things that we really wanted to grow weren't growing as much and the things that aren't as emotionally fulfilling are stable. So I'm getting the sense that the things that are emotionally fulfilling are stabilizing, are growing, and are having the potential now to be something you can lean on and fully enjoy. And I'm thinking of, for example, like, Instead of just working a nine to five and you have a business on the side and your business isn't doing well, that business going well and feeling like you can finally like pull back from that nine to five and go further into your business. Or if it's finding a better home that suits you and your family's needs, it's like finally finding that right home that feels emotionally in total alignment and that brings you guys peace when you're there, that fits that dynamic for you and your loved ones. So it's this thing that connects with you on a deep soul level, um, but also on an intellectual level with this Ace of Swords. This could be some new idea, this new insight that you have about what to do next. And this, um, it can be also like some kind of communication. There's an understanding, there's an awakening happening. And I think, again, it's going to lead to a situation that has the potential for deep emotional fulfillment. And I pulled a 10 of Pentacles, you guys, best card, financial stability, success, um, strong foundations. Look at all this family 
sitting here around this table, eating all this food. This is somebody that has access to everything that they need, the emotional familial support, the money, the food, the the resources. It's having having an eclipse in your fourth house is creating that sense of bond and abundance in this area of your life, emotional and fiscal and physical abundance. And so I feel like, again, you guys are stepping into a really, really beautiful time, especially because you are having some of the most positive planets in your second house, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, the planets of financial abundance, the planets of beautiful relationships, of harmony, of spiritual development and support are all in the area of your finances. You also have Mars here and this moon is sextiling Mars in the second or sorry, this eclipse is sextiling Mars in a second. That means that you are going to be informed with this Ace of Swords of what the next right decision or the next right move is to create even more financial stability. This is an eclipse of change where we have to take action because Mars is sextiling it. There is a decision, a next step that we can direct and we will know what it is because there is an awareness here of what it is. And once you take that next step, you will be able to really take advantage of the positive energy in this area of finances for you. So I'm definitely seeing money really stepping up for you, stability within the home really stepping up, whether that's finding the right home or feeling really comfortable within your existing environment. There's something that's really going to stabilize and become foundational for you that is emotionally fulfilling, that's intellectually fulfilling. And that creates a sense of long-term financial success and abundance for you and your family. You guys also have Mercury in the sixth, or sorry, Mercury in the fifth, sextiling Venus and Jupiter in the second. So I feel like your desire to just pursue the things that make you happy, the things that fulfill you emotionally, like I was mentioning before, not just your nine to five, not just your average relationship, but really pursue the best that mindset is what's ultimately going to lead you to the financial success and to the happiness and abundance that you're looking for. Oh, a lot of cards came out. Okay, I got the energy card, <clears throat> the memory card, and the agreement. It's so weird. I've been only pulling one for many people. So I think with the agreement card, some of you can be having some major transitions right now. Some of you will be moving in the next six months with this card. I'm feeling like contractual agreement, but also agreement with your partner. It's having a lot more harmony within your relationships coming into place, especially within the home and feeling like people are finally seeing eye to eye. Things are calming down and like you can truly rest in whatever is appearing right now. So the change needs to be made. The action needs to be taken, but you can rest in the results of what you are moving towards. The memory card to me, I feel like is telling you to leave behind the memories of things being challenging. You do have Saturn squaring the nodes. Saturn is your traditional ruler. And so there is some element of being held back by the past. And so you guys have to be willing to release the past to step into the sense of abundance and fertility and um, fortuitousness and happiness within the home. And so this is available to you, but it will have to take some exertion, some effort to not fall back into the past, to not fall back into the memory. So be very mindful of where your mind is going because you have the potential to reach this, but it is a potential, right? A lot of this will happen for you, but there is some discernment that needs to be there as well. And then the energy card for me is pointing me directly to Mars in the second. You're energized to create this financial abundance in your life. Um, if you feel that something is lighting you up and giving you energy, that is something to move towards. That's how you know if this is filling up your cup. That's how you know if it's the next right step for you. I'm going to pull one more card. I got the wolf card. This is a card about community. So I'm really feeling that with the wolf and the 10 of pentacles, you guys are being surrounded by the support of loved ones right now. This is a really nice time for family, um, for chosen family or for blood family, whatever it is for you. I feel like you guys are in a clan being loved and supported right now. And I think that this is just a reminder of the fact that you can really lean on those people because they have your back 110%. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius Rising. Really beautiful eclipse for you all. Major energies in this angular house. And if that resonates, I would love to hear about your personal experience because that helps my practice tremendously. And if you want a personal reading from me or if you want to learn astrology, you can check out all that info in the description box below. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. 
All right, and last but certainly not least, we have my beautiful, wonderful, sweet, delectable Pisces rising. So for you, Pisces, this eclipse in Taurus is happening in your third house. It is conjunct Uranus, so you can expect a very active mind right now. My usual typical um, Pisces mind being very calm, being very, you know, it will depend on the rest of your chart, but typically Pisces tends to be very easygoing, um, very loving, very calm. And I feel like you guys are definitely going to be very stimulated right now. And you might be laying awake at night thinking of tons of things. You might be very energized. You might be out in your community talking to a lot of people, gaining a lot of information. You might be having amazing epiphanies through conversations. Uranus brings an awakening and an enlightenment. And with Mercury in your fourth house, this could even come from within the family and home dynamic you could talk to a loved one you could talk to a family member back home and and have some kind of idea come through them um which is going to ultimately improve your personal development because uh, mercury in the fourth is sextiling venus and jupiter in your first house you have venus jupiter neptune and mars all in your first inspiring you helping you to become more of the person that you want to be. Um, this is a very, 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 very powerful group of planets here that is full of love, full of abundance, full of spiritual and emotional support. For you, it's one of the best times of your life right now, I will say. One of the best times. And it's because these are the best plans you could possibly have here. And they are here to help you work miracles in your life. And there may be some shifts that you need to make either in the way that you think or communicate um, something about the way that you put yourself out there or the way that you perceive life has to shift and that's why i have this eight of cups there's a need to walk away um, from whatever from whatever outdated mode of perceiving something is and i think that because of mercury in the fourth it's going to help the conversations that are very emotional, very intimate with loved ones who know you very much behind closed doors, those conversations are going to help you realize where those shifts can still be made, um, where you can walk away from this current ideology, this thought process, this task, you know, whatever, whatever you've been dedicating yourself to, either intellectually or even time-wise. Like maybe you've been kind of um, very busy and like dispersing your energy and it's a time in which a lot of that is going to be analyzed for you to see, you know, what do I need to change about myself, about my life and my dynamic right now that others can help me see so that I can, um, so that I can honestly be less, like have less resistance and just be happier. I feel like with all these plants in your first, you have so much potential for great happiness right now, so much potential for manifestation. And with this eclipse in your third, it's about realizing where maybe you've been just juggling a lot, like really doing a lot. Uh, it's a very busy house. Like I said, I got a lot of energy from like this eclipse happening here with Uranus here. It's like a lot of change. I'm getting this idea of like whirlwind. I feel like you guys have maybe even going through a whirlwind up until this point, but you're going to be continuing to experience it with the two of pentacles. You've been juggling 10 different plates in the air. And I feel like these beautiful planets in your first house are maybe asking you guys to really check in with yourself with this Hierophant card, check in with your values, study yourself so that you are being very grounded in each thing that you're dedicating yourself to and so that you are managing your energy, the managing your mind, especially around what you're doing. Um, I just feel like there needs to be some sense of of I don't know I thought I'm not getting the message necessarily like let me pull another card I'm not getting the message necessarily that you need to like do less things I got that for quite a few groups um even though Taurus kind of gives me that vibe in general but I feel like what you guys need to do is like very much make sure with this cleansing card to have a very consistent spiritual practice the cleansing in the hierophant to me is saying that you guys have tons of spiritual energy, self-care energy, loving energy coming through in your first house used to support you, but you absolutely have to take the time to access it. And I think that is what's going to help you realize what outdated mode of mindset or communication you might be living in. Because I do think that there's some 
perception that's not serving you anymore and like you're quite busy and I think it's not always going to give you a lot of time to process what that shift needs to be. This eclipse though will hit. You will feel this eclipse. And hopefully with that and some time alone with Mercury in the fourth, some time alone speaking with your closest loved ones, you'll be able to integrate some of what is coming through around what needs to be shifted. I feel like with this nine of wands, there's an endurance to you. Like you have a lot going on, a lot that you're juggling. You're like, I'm just going to keep going with the knight of pentacles. Like I'm going to just keep building. And I think that's the message for you guys is to keep going, to keep building. It's okay to have a lot of new things come in to, to do them all. It's okay. I feel like for you guys to do these things, you are being very supported. This eclipse is trining or sorry, sex selling Mars in your first house. So you are being pushed with energy right now to go out into the world, to be aggressive almost in your way. Um, like energize, I should say in your pursuit of something in your pursuit of many things, I should say. But ultimately, you have to keep checking back in because you don't want to get off track and you don't want to not realize what these mindset shifts or communication shifts are. Um, or maybe there are shifts about just new things coming in. But I feel like with the Eight of Cups card, actually, anyway, this came out reverse. So maybe it's saying that you are meant to stay with the things that you're doing. Like I'm getting a sense that you're meant to go all into the things that you're doing, but there might still be some mindset shifts that could really ben that you could really benefit from. And I think with all these plants in your first house, it's giving you like so much angelic support that I feel like that will just naturally be happening if you take the time to connect with that energy alone to rejuvenate and rehabilitate yourself. Okay, I hope that that message is clear because I kind of feel like it was unclear. Um, all right, let me pull one animal card for you. Oh, I got the horse. Okay, this is the card that I had for the overall reading. Let me pull one more. And the tarantula. Okay, so these are really powerful cards. I think the tarantula, if I'm not mistaken, is about creation and like weaving your own web. Oh, no, no. At a crossroads, claiming life's purpose. The tra tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention in order to find true happiness. You must choose dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. Okay, so I feel like this is kind of talking about what we were saying. Like you guys have a lot of things that you're juggling. I don't feel like this card is telling you to give up those things, but I think there are going to be distracting elements that are actually not on your path. And I think that could be where the mindset shifts need to come from because you might feel like you need to do everything and you're already doing a lot. And so I feel like it's not telling you to do less than what you're already doing. I feel like it's telling you to be, aware of everything that you are taking on to make sure it is really in alignment with your purpose um, and really feels right for you. Because I just feel like this sense of extreme busyness and almost like the point of burnout, but you keep going, you're really strong, you're being really divinely guided, but there are going to be things that continue to pop up and you'll have to say no to some of them. You'll have to shift your mind away from some of them. Um, and so I think that's what's ultimately uh, what this message is trying to say. It's like, I couldn't decide. I'm like, are you focusing? Are you doing just one thing? But I feel like you guys are doing many things, but you need to focus on those things strongly and stay in your purpose grounded. And the only way to do that is to connect, to have the time to cleanse your soul, to connect with spirit, to the divine, to your, to your loved ones, have these intimate conversations and ask yourself, is this right for me? And if it is, juggle it, put it in there. But if it's not, run away. And this horse card to me is saying that I feel like you guys are in this really fast paced and exciting time of your life where you feel free, you feel fun, you feel excited. And that's kind of when we can get carried away and take on too many things. So just really be mindful of this. Be in a moment of self-study where you're very much aware of what you do need to walk away from and what you do need to stay um, juggling and balancing because I think you guys just have a lot a lot going on a lot that is meant for you right now you have a lot of planets in your first house so it's your time to go after it right it's your time um to shine in many ways and so these opportunities are coming for you this is like a once in a lifetime event to have this eclipse um happening along with all these planets going on in your first house it's just 
crazy energy. So I do hope you take advantage of it. Enjoy it. If this resonates and you want to share with me your experiences, please do so in the comments down below. It really helps my practice. And if you want an astrology reading or if you want to learn astrology from me, you'll check those out in the description box below. And I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye.